I'm sitting here with uh, Kimberly Staples, or would you rather Kim? Kimberly, yeah. Kimberly, Kimberly Staples, <laughs> the director of the true story of the Three Little Pigs, our upcoming TYA production here at GTA. So let's just get right into it. Um, what separates the true story of the Little Pigs from the one that we traditionally know and are told growing up? Okay, what separates it is perspective. Okay. And it's told from the wolf's perspective. Uh, and we come to find out that this is all a horrible accident and uh, he is not the murderous wolf that we assume him to be from our childhood stories of Grimm's fairy tales. Sure. All right. Uh, what is your connection specifically to TYA? Um, I love TYA and I love seeing children have that epiphany of this is so cool, yeah. and maybe I could do this. Um, and I think it reaches another generation, because I mean, that's the whole thing about theater, you know? Mm -hmm. We want to keep reaching out to that next generation, because not only is that where our, our for future students will come from, but also our future audiences, and they're so excited. Mm -hmm. And they haven't really had a lot of exposure to live theater, because we live in a world of iPads and streaming, and you know, and I think that's what makes TYA so exciting for them and for me. So then do you think that's what keeps the format relevant? Because we do a TYA every year. Right. What right. what what keeps that that format in, in our rotation, do you think? Um, I do think that's part of the reason that it keeps its relevance. I also think that if you look around at other universities, at other community theaters, there's not an awful lot of programming for that age group. Or sure. if it is it's an anomaly. It happens once every three or four mm -hmm. years. Um, and we don't see touring shows like we used to of, of actors in a company coming into a school to perform, you know, pull out the trunk. Right. Um, and so I, I do think it's really important. Right. It's really important. For so many people, it's let's keep you right to the middle schools. Right. Let's have Frozen Junior <laughs> produced by right. 11 year olds. Right, Not. right. Lion King Junior. <laughs> Again, yeah. No, I know. I know. <laughs> Not quite at the collegiate level. Right. But I think it's refreshing. Right. I've done two of them. Yeah. And it was some of the most rewarding experiences I've ever had was, you know, looking out in the audience and seeing the kids. And it it's some of the theater that makes you feel like you're making a difference the most. Right. Yeah. Right. Because you know what? They're not going to go home at the end of the school year and talk about math problems 1 through 42, right. they're going to go home and talk about the experiences. Right. Those are the things that they keep with them. Right. Or even like Hamlet. Yes. <laughs> they wouldn't be like, yes. you know, the, the third act of Hamlet, that first scene, that really <laughs> right. stuck with me. Right. But, Alas, poor Yorick. <laughs> yeah. No. But yeah. this, they, they can bite. Absolutely. In yeah. more ways than one. Yeah. So what about, you've had a long career as an educator. Yes. Um, how has that experience sort of influence some of the creative choices that you've made with the show? I'm always looking to give actors space to make choices. Mm -hmm. And I I have a little saying, um, <laughs> I would, would rather calm a maniac than raise a corpse. Sure. So I would hope that actors are just going to throw it all against the wall and we sift through in a collaboration to try and figure out what works. What works for the actor, what works for the character, what works for the script. Because for me, it always comes back to subtext and mm -hmm. text. I'm a really big text person. Um, and I hope actors will dig into that. So I hope that's kind of carried over from what I've been doing the past 40 years or so <laughs> uh, into what I'm doing now. Yeah. How does teaching... So, so your teaching experience, is it just theater or have you delved into other subjects? As well? I have delved into other subjects. Yeah. I have. There's nothing I'd rather do. Right. than work with theater because no two days are the same. Mm -hmm. uh, I've taught English literature, I've, I've taught Spanish, um, I once taught math at a junior high level. Yeah, deep breath. I don't yeah. know what they were thinking, That's but you know tough. what? We made it through. <laughs> we made it through. Um, but yeah, I, theater kind of fulfills everything on my bucket list sure. as far as it's exciting every day. It's different every day. Uh, we're creating the world of the mm -hmm. play, and for me, there's nothing more exciting than that. What does a student benefit from pursuing theater education rather than a traditional? A traditional, say, theater path. Yeah. I, I think education in general is a calling, mm -hmm. and sometimes you don't really realize it until you get into it, and then I think, okay, 
is this truly a calling or is it not? If it's not, we need to, we need to hang a left, sure. right? But if it's a calling, there's nothing more fulfilling than watching that spark at night, at night, at night. Um, there's nothing, was nothing more thrilling for me than to have a ninth grade student stick with me to 12th grade and think back, okay, what was he producing? What was he bringing to the table right. in ninth grade? And where is he now? Right. And you don't get to see that progression in an English class. I remember that shy kid in the like, back of the classroom. Exactly. And now they're up there exactly. giving the best monologue you've ever exactly. seen. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is, I, you know, I never intended to train students to, to be Broadway bound. Sure. But I wanted to train the next attorneys, the next doctors, the, the, the next pastor. You teach universal skills. Right, in theater. right, yeah. right. And it, and it touches everything. I had a former student in his third year of law school. I got a text on Sunday. It said, Staples, I'm arguing in front of, and I can't tell you the name of the court because I don't remember. And he said, and I'm using my theater skills. And I thought, score. There you go. <laughs> this is a score. You did it. You know, <laughs> let me know when your graduation is. Right. I will, I will come. So it's, it's something that, you know, as a ninth grade student, when he came in and he was five foot three and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and didn't say boo. And <laughs> now he's arguing as a third yeah. year law student, working part time at a firm and, you know, great success in front of him. And, you know, that's the rhetoric that always gets passed around in school is when would I ever need X math class or right. like whatever. But right. theater is just so like, right. it's the art of communicating. Right. You know, and, right. and no matter where you are, you're going to need it. You're going to need it. You're so need back it. to pigs. Sure. What, what does this story teach us? Whether you're a kid or an adult, any age range, what about this story can we take? There are two sides to every story. Mm -hmm. And it's important to investigate them both. Yeah. Uh, and to know that what we think is true might not be. Mm. Sure. Well, that's all the time I'm going to take from you. <laughs> okay. But thank you very much. You were very precise, and I appreciate it. <laughs> We had a bit on a, a theater education tangent, but I was just really interested. Um, but yeah, thank you so much Absolutely. for your time. I appreciate it. Absolutely. You. Okay, thank you.